Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Common Sense Academy. Today, we're going to watch a video of a sovereign citizen turning a traffic violation into 15 days in jail because he gets held in contempt of court for opening his mouth and spitting off a whole bunch of nonsense. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. This is Common Sense Academy, where we take a look at sovereign citizens, auditors, and other goofballs doing dumb stuff and interacting with the police and in court. I'm feeling extra patriotic today. Wanted to change it up a little. I got my USA flag. Um, if you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Looking for subscribers subscribers right now trying to get to 10,000 YouTube will uh will give me some extra features give me a merchandise shelf so most of my viewers are not subscribed go ahead and subscribe it's a free a completely free way to support the show now before we watch our video some of you got your coffee got your beverage got your beer got your rum i know some of you out there drink rum um, grab your glass, your, your drink, join me for the same time sip because it tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Let's do a sip. <sighs> Delicious. And if you're drinking coffee, this is my favorite coffee right here. Black Rifle Coffee, veteran owned, tastes delicious. There's a link to buy below on Amazon. Go ahead, click on that link, get yourself some of this Black Rifle. It supports veterans, great tasting coffee. Now let's watch this video. City versus Joshua Martinez. One zero five three one six five eight five eight. Good afternoon. On the charge of having a suspended driver's license on April 12th. What is your plea, sir? Uh, just I have a couple questions before we proceed. I, I don't understand the nature and cause of the charges. Well, you're charged with driving on a suspended, canceled, or revoked driver's license. Sir. Okay. Is that a criminal offense or it's civil? A criminal offense. Sir. Criminal? Okay. Is there a, a sworn statement against me or injured party? I believe you probably received a citation on April 12th. That would be the criminal complaint filed against you. Okay, and is there a, a injured party or damage to property here? It's a charge you? brought by the city of Las Vegas, sir. Okay, so the city's the, the victim in the case? The city is the, yes, victim? the charging party. So they're yes. the victim? Sir, they're, the victim element is a different legal term than is used. Uh, the city is the party making the allegations against you, yes. Okay, so... What is your plea if, on if the, the charge, Mr. Martinez? Is the, Mr. Martinez, the today victim, is your Mr. I Martinez. Like I am in charge this of this courtroom, and you're going to stop it. We are in charge of the courtroom. Right? Marshall, would you show Mr. Martinez the inside of our holding tank, please? You're not going to tell me who's in charge of my courtroom, Mr. Martinez. Go ahead and go with the marshal. That is direct contempt of court. You are in contempt. City versus Joshua Martinez. One zero five three one six five eight five A. Okay, Mr. Martinez, since you have informed me that I am in contempt of court and that you are in fact in charge of this courtroom, I'm going to go ahead and sentence you today to direct contempt of court. I will give you an opportunity to apologize if you choose to do so and behave in a manner that I consider appropriate for a courtroom. Would you like to do that today, Mr. Martinez? I would like to proceed only if I can have my uh, questions answered. That's all I that wanted. wasn't my question, sir. Did you wish to have the opportunity to apologize and proceed in a manner that I consider appropriate for the courtroom? What would I be it is a yes or a no question. What would I be apologizing for? your direct contempt of court, sir. All I was asking was legal questions, ma'am. I disagree, sir. To tell me that you are in charge of this courtroom and tell me that I am in contempt is not asking legal questions. It is contempt of court. I'm going to ask you the question one more time. Did you wish to apologize and proceed in a manner I consider appropriate in this courtroom or not? Direct contempt. I'm going to sentence him to 15 days in jail, and we'll set it for a video 15 days from today. Actually, he can just be released on it, given the court date. Okay, thank you. The Sixth Amendment grants me that. Sir, I would suggest you stop speaking now. Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution says, 
Marshall, you're going to want to close the door. Can we go ahead and get him an MH evaluation while he's there, too? So we can determine whether he's competent to represent himself when he's released. Boy, okay, that was a good one. Mr. Martinez, Mr. Martinez, your mouth, it, it got you in trouble, man. It got you in trouble, 15 days in jail. Was it really worth the 15 days in jail? You're killing me. This guy turned a traffic citation, driving on a suspended license into 15 days in jail. Uh, no nonsense female judge here. Man, let me tell you, she did not... She did not hesitate. Woo! Most judges give some more leeway than that, even when they're getting lip. But this woman, my God, boom! She brought the hammer down, and she didn't bat an eye. Like, this is daily business for her. Daily business. And that's what people got to understand. When you go into a courtroom, these judges putting people in jail... Most people would think about it for a long time, but wow, it's just a big decision. When they're putting people in jail for life, 20 years, five years, a year and a half, you think they're going to blink an eye for putting you in jail for 15 days? And let me tell you, even new judges, all the judges, okay, they are, they are very, very conscious of keeping order in their courtroom. That's the greatest fear of a judge. So some of them give more leeway than this judge. Boom! I mean, she, her and that Kentucky judge, no nonsense. No nonsense. So let's look into some of the uh, sovereign citizen babblings here. Um, number one, I was a little impressed with Mr. Martinez. He came in wearing a blazer, very nicely dressed, um, ready to present his argument. If he had a sensible one, it may have been well received. Um... First, he has the judge, is it criminal or civil? Criminal or civil? Some states differentiate between traffic code, uh, criminal, civil, okay? Uh, for example, people call me about DUIs and they said, Joe, is it DUI, is this just traffic? I'm like, no, DUI is, is, is definitely criminal, all right? DUI is definitely criminal. Um, some states have a traffic code like Pennsylvania and a criminal code, but let me tell you, DI, DUI is a criminal offense, and even these offenses in the traffic code are technically categorized as summary offenses, so they have criminal classifications. Um, there's no real difference in PA, but everybody likes to think that there's a difference and likes to say, oh, that was just a traffic, etc., etc. Um, driving on a suspended license, though, can be penalized with jail time. So so um, it makes sense in this particular state where this occurred if that's categorized as a criminal offense. Um, he asks her if there's a sworn statement against him. Like this is some uh, some of this sovereign citizen magic that they pull out. Where's the sworn statement? Where's the sworn statement? Truth of the matter is, every offense is going to have some sort of sworn statement. It's going to be the initial report, the criminal complaint, the affidavit of probable cause. They're called different things everywhere. Police criminal complaint, um, police report, affidavit of, of probable cause, police narrative report. I've seen many different things. Okay, the officers are going to write it down and sign it. Boom, there it is. You're actually going to get that on every case. So that's not a that's not a completely ridiculous question. Then oh, he gets to oh, this is the good, the corpus delecti, the injured party. This is the fake argument by the sovereign citizens in their world. They believe the old common law that is that actually should apply but it has been usurped by our current laws, they think the old common law required an injury. False, wrong, not true. Okay, since the beginning of laws, there have been laws that restrict a person's behavior, even if there's no particular injured human being or damage to someone else's property. All right, the courts and the government generally is going to have plenary jurisdiction. It's going to be jurisdiction to write laws as long as they are not unconstitutional. Okay, they can write laws limiting any type of conduct, almost any type of conduct at all. Okay, um, the Constitution is there to protect you from it getting out of hand. Otherwise, they can write these laws, plenary jurisdiction. Okay, 
So the traffic code regulates the laws of the road. There is no particular injured party. The state has an interest. The state is not the victim. He keeps talking about a victim, et cetera, et cetera. No, the government has an interest to protect the people. Sometimes the government is protecting the government's own interest as well. There's laws that just protect the government. But the government is there, the criminal laws exist to protect the public, to protect the society as a whole. The traffic code exists to protect society as a whole, to regulate traffic, driving, the roadways, etc. You get those roadways for free, buddy. You get those roadways, not for free, but your taxes go and they pay for those roadways. It's a public good. It's a public good. So you have to follow the rules, all right? There doesn't need to be any corpus delecti. That's false. It's fake. Corpus delecti does have a meaning when it comes to evidentiary law. Certain crimes, certain crimes require more than just a statement against an individual. You do need more than just maybe a single piece of evidence. It is an evidentiary rule, okay? But it is not a rule when it comes to arguing that the laws are invalidated. Um, he says the city is a victim. No, like I said, the city has an interest. You actually could think of the city as a victim that way. You could think of the government or society as a victim of you driving around and being dumb on the road. Um, but technically, no, there's no victim. Uh, then he gets to, then she says she's in charge of the courtroom because he's given her lip and he says, we are in charge of the courtroom. Well, sir, maybe in a in a in a greater pie in the sky sort of sense, that's true, right? Uh, in many states, judges are elected, our government officials are elected, and they serve at the pleasure of the people. But once those people get into office, there are rules, okay, and they have certain powers that have to be respected. If you don't like the way a judge uh, conducts their courtroom, you can vote them out of office, you can peacefully protest them, um, you can write letters, you can campaign against them being on the bench. That's all protected First Amendment political speech, okay? But when you're in that courtroom, their rules apply whether you like it or not. So yeah, in a certain sense, the, it is the people's courtroom. It's the people's government. But in a more practical and logical and realistic sense, it's her courtroom and she has the power in that role. Um, if she misuses that power, there are ways um, that you can you can uh, report her to the Judicial Board of Conduct. You can make it public, okay? But you can't just say, this is, no, it's, it's we are in charge of the courtroom. No, you're not, okay? Um, he tells her when she's, he's, <laughs> she's marched him off to jail, he says, he says, you are in contempt. Yeah, yeah uh, she's in contempt, all right, Mr. Martinez, and you're going to jail. That's what's happening. She's going to sit up there with her robe and call the next case just like she did, like a boss. Um, when he comes back, they bring him back the second time. And I apologize. The sound was not that good on this video. I apologize. That's how the video came to me. I can't help it. So turn it up. I apologize. He comes back the second time. No more blazer. He took his blazer off. Must have been hot. Must have been hot over there in that holding cell. Um, he says, I will proceed only if I have my questions answered. Again, sir, you're not there to ask questions. Some judges will be polite and will answer questions, but you're not there to ask questions. You're there to answer questions. And if you don't want to answer the questions, you get a lawyer who will answer the questions for you. But if you're unrepresented, uh, you're going to have to answer or you're probably going to go and sit in jail like this fella did. Um, he says, all I was asking was legal questions. Nah, man, you were getting into nonsense. This is the people's courtroom, blah, 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 over and over, wasting the judge's time. I mean, she was polite for a few minutes, um, but you got off. he got off the rails there. So she had enough. Boom, sent, his, sent him to jail, 15 days in jail. Wow. Um, he goes off and on about the Sixth Amendment. Now, the Sixth Amendment actually does guarantee... Um, a person certain rights to be confronted with their accuser. So um, you have you have certain rights to be confronted directly by your accuser and to ask that person questions. And if you have a trial, you would get that right. The officer who filed the complaint against you would have to come in. He would have to talk about what he personally observed as to how or why you broke the law. And then you would get to question him and exercise your Sixth Amendment rights. 
But during a proceeding when it's just you and the judge, the Sixth Amendment doesn't really apply. It, it just doesn't. It just doesn't, sir. I'm sorry that you're you're off course. You're reading too much into it. OK, and that's the, the truth of the Constitution is there's very there's some very general language and people you could read into it a whole bunch of nonsense and people do this. We do that. Human beings. Look, it's human nature. OK. You can read something from the Bible and you can read into it as much as you want or as much as you don't want to. There's narrow interpretations of a text and there's broad interpretations of the text. What sovereign citizens do is they take the text of cases and the Constitution and, and statutes and they read into it extremely broadly. So in a logical sense, you know, their statement about it could fall under it, okay? But it's not, it's not practical or it's too far removed or that's not how the court has, has interpreted that particular language. And that's what the sovereign citizens don't get. Like that's what they can't get shoved down their throat is that you're in, just because you interpret the language a certain way doesn't make it so. Just because you interpret it that way doesn't make it so. And that's what this guy was doing with the Sixth Amendment. The Sixth Amendment does guarantee you your right to confront your accuser. You're allowed to sit in the courtroom while your accuser uh, um, testifies against you and you get to cross-examine that individual. Um, the one thing I was going to say, this, again, this judge, she acted like a boss. She threw him in jail. No hesitation. Um, the judges have broad powers in the courtroom to hold individuals in contempt, okay? It can be appealed, reviewed, etc., etc. but most of the time they're going to be upheld unless they're completely out of the bounds of reason, um, which ha does happen. It does happen. Um, but I'll tell you, I've seen judges hold uh, probation officers in contempt of court for letting their cell phone ring. Okay, and judges, again, they're given broad powers to regulate and keep the courtroom in order because a courtroom could be very disorderly. You have people who are facing extreme amounts of jail time, uh, sometimes two parties who hate each other. You have to have police in there. A fight, a murder could break out in a courtroom. It could happen. Um, so this judge, she didn't mess around. The one thing I was disappointed in for Mr. Martinez is, and maybe I missed it because he babbled there for a second, is he never brought up the right to travel. This was the perfect opportunity for it. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Common Sense Academy. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. It's a free way to support the show. Please subscribe. I'm on the drive to 10,000 subscribers. And if you like coffee, try out Black Rifle. Um, there's a link in my description below. It's veteran owned. It goes to veterans. I love seeing veterans run businesses. Uh, I'm a veteran with my own law practice and YouTube channel. Thank you very much.